Okay. Now, let us quickly summarize what we did yesterday. So, we have formulated what we call as learning outcomes for this series of lectures in the form of a few questions which we are going to answer. Now, yesterday we uh, discussed the answers to questions such as what is the motivation and goal of a course such as introduction to research, why do we need a course like this. So, we said it is important to facilitate the development of right attitudes, skills and habits in research scholars, so that ultimately we are able to achieve the vision of excellence in research. Then we uh, enumerated or listed out what are the skills, habits and attitudes required. So, we said that uh, a research scholar should have good thinking skills good communication skills, then uh, he needs to develop the skills of doing experiments, stress and time management and also doing vast amounts of literature survey. As regards the habits, we said uh, a research scholar should have reading habits, documentation habit, document whatever uh, new ideas you come across. So, I hope you are all taking notes uh, during this course and also participate in meetings and discussions. As far as the topic of attitudes is concerned, uh, it is a very important and much wider topic. We touched upon one important aspect namely that of motivation. If you want to do high quality uh, research, it is not sufficient if you are motivated by desire for promotion and things like that. So, those kind of motivations are not sufficient for you to do great research. So, you must be motivated by higher motives like intellectual challenge, intellectual satisfaction or service to society okay, and so on. So, we listed out those various motives. Then we uh, went on to point out what is the difference between a course based education and research education. So, we set out the goals of bachelors, masters and PhD and we said that if you do a PhD, you take a license or you get a license to teach and guide others. Now, we explained what does, what abilities should a person have for teaching and guiding others. Specifically, we pointed out that you must have the ability to manage your own learning and be an independent thinker. Next we uh, started on a discussion of good thinking skills, we called it as productive thinking. So, if we want to be good researchers, we must become good thinkers and then we must understand what is meant by good thinking. So, we said as against uh, learning a large number of different subjects, you should be able to, your mind should be able to conceive different ways of doing the same thing. So, productive thinking involves coming up with a variety of approaches for doing the same thing. If you are able to conceive different approaches of doing the same thing, then we can say that your mind will tend to be productive or it would tend to be creative. Okay. So, now we will proceed further on this and uh, discuss what are the different ways in which one can think. So, that will be the discussion uh, topic of discussion for this particular session. So, I am repeating the quote uh, that we made yesterday that is the theme of this particular session. Education is not about learning diverse subjects, but about learning diverse ways to the same subject. Now, we shall begin with an activity uh, meant to illustrate various levels of thinking. Now, if one wants to be a good athlete, then one must have some knowledge of how the body, the muscles and so on work. While one may not be an expert, a medical practitioner, you need not be a medical practitioner to be an athlete, but you must have a sufficient knowledge of how your body works. Similarly, if you want to be a good researcher, then you must know what are the various ways in which you can think, what are the various levels in which you can think. 
So, you may not be a researcher on thinking process itself, but you must have a knowledge of these things. So, this is what we are discussing here. Now, I will like to introduce this uh, topic of levels of thinking with the help of an activity. So, let me first uh, state what are the levels of thinking that we want to understand with the help of the activity that we will carry out. So, the lowest level of thinking is memory. Next higher level is called application or problem solving. The next higher level is evaluation or critical thinking. And finally, you have creativity. So, what are these various levels? How do we identify whether the particular thinking that is happening is merely memory based or is it critical thinking or is it uh, application or problem solving? So, this is what we want to understand. Now, the, uh, the activity that we will do is something that looks very simple, but as you will find it is interesting. Make 5 squares of equal size out of a single large square. You are allowed to cut and paste. So, what I am saying is that imagine that you have let us say a square piece of paper. Right? All of you have a piece of paper, you can probably create a square piece out of the sheets that you have right by doing something like this. So, here I have made a square piece of paper. Okay? Now, let us say you have this piece and you are given a scissor. Now, these are the only two things you have. You have to divide this square piece of paper into five equal parts. Uh, please pay due attention to all the words that are used in this problem statement. So, we are saying that you must divide this square piece of paper into 5, okay, number 5, 5 parts and all the parts should be equal in area and all the 5 parts should be squares. So, divide the square piece of paper into 5 equal squares. Okay. So, for instance, if I want to divide it into 4 equal squares, you know it is very simple. I divide this into half and then I further divide this half and then I get a quarter. Now, if I tear out, I will get five, uh, 4 equal squares, right? one square, second square, third square, third square here and fourth square. Right? Now, the puzzle is to divide into 5 equal parts. You are allowed to cut and paste. What does it mean? If you feel that you have a method in which you divide it into maybe 100 parts and then you will join together 20 parts make one square, another 20 parts make another square and so on, you are permitted. Please divide into as many parts as you want, but ultimately you can paste them together and then make 5 squares. So, that is the puzzle. Okay? Uh, let me draw it out and further explain this. Uh, point what you are expected to do. I am not giving the solution. I am just trying to clarify what I want you to do, because whenever I have done this activity, I have found that people miss out on the uh, nuances of the problem statement. So, let me draw it out. So, this is my square piece of paper and ultimately I want this kind of a thing, one square second square, third square, fourth square and fifth square. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, if I sum the areas of this 5 squares, I must get this big square. Okay? That is how it should be. So, it is a um, fairly straightforward statement. And what I have said is that you can divide it into more parts if you want that each of these squares may be constructed from different parts. It may have different pieces and then you are joining them together. If you want it that way, you are permitted. Okay? So, um, before proceeding on the uh, activity, I will just take a couple of questions on uh, the problem statement. In case you do not, you have not understood the problem statement, 
please seek a clarification okay so just two uh, centers just to see whether you have understood the uh, thing correctly let me so let me go to walchand institute walchand institute does someone want to give a solution let us consider my square area uh, for example 10 into 10 100 this is my original square so i will divide this into five equal squares by putting equation like this uh, let us consider x is the side of my first square so the equation forms like this x square into 5 equal to 100 so 100 unit of original square so after solving this equation i will get side x is equal to 2 into square root of 5 so this will be the side of my first square so i hope uh, the addition of all five squares results the equal area of original. Uh, whatever you have uh, said is not really the solution because I have told you you have a uh, scissor and uh, you should actually realize that uh, 2 root 5 that is the important point. How will you cut it so that you get that length of 2 root 5 right. You have to actually cut and show me that you have got the 5 squares you understand. How will you get that 2 root 5? That is the big problem. I hope I will get in this way, sir. I have not tried, but maybe this is the x. So that is uh, 2 into square root of 5. So this will be the one part. Similarly, right side top, second part. And the third part, left side below. And the fourth part, right side below. So 4 equal square. And the remaining part area by addition of all four pieces will result fifth area this may be okay okay now let me just uh, move before moving on to another center let me just uh, repeat what you have said and tell you what is the problem with that what you are saying is that you will divide this is your square, you will have one square cut at this end, another square cut here, another one cut here and cut here and the remaining part you say somehow you will make the fifth square. Now this is really not a solution because first of all I do not know according to you this one side is 2 root 5. Okay? I do not know how you are going to get this 2 root 5 that is one problem. Second problem is it is not clear how this shape that you get in the middle can be converted into a square by cutting that is not clear. So please uh, uh, understand that when you say you have a solution you should really tell me how the whole thing is being cut and uh, you should show me the five squares right and if you cannot uh, get the solution at least you should tell what is the direction in which you are moving like for example you have told in this case right it is important for us to see how you are thinking about this problem solution is not important how you are thinking and you rec recognizing whether this approach will lead to the solution okay is important so here i don't see how it will lead to a solution because i do not know how the shaded area can be converted into a square by cutting whichever way you want to cut okay let Please uh, retry, I will go to another center. So let me go to Vignan Institute of Technology and Science, Nalgonda. Hello. So first divide the sheet into the four parts like this. This is a four parts. Then after this, each part it will be the divided into the five parts. Then you can cut the four parts
this it will be the another part this it will be the exactly because this is exactly equal area okay so please repeat what you have done you have okay so i it is they folded into the a uh, four parts and okay. each part it is i uh, divided as the uh, five parts and it is a uh, at the each edge i as a uh, marked as the uh, four four and it is a cut down in the middle you will having the on the top two parts and the bottom two parts if you can combine it is a one square okay now i got the point that you divide as paper into four parts please take one fourth of the paper and please uh, repeat the remaining uh, thing i did not get how you divide the each quarter one of the paper the paper is uh, divided into the five parts yeah show me how you divide into five parts five rectangles Ah, five rectangles. Okay, five rectangles. Then five rectangles. Okay. Five rectangles. Then. Suppose if it is a this is like that, it is a five rectangles. Okay. When you cut each ah. side, I am cutting into the okay. each side. It is a four rectangles. Each side it is a four rectangle. This side it is a four rectangles. You will having the two rectangles here, two rectangles here. If you combine this two to four rectangles, you will get the one square. Uh -huh. that, this is the you can measure it is exactly it is the yes please uh, let me get that part is not clear you are saying you are dividing um, uh, div uh, let me draw it out and then um, you tell me whether I have understood it right there is a little bit of problem in um, understanding what you exactly you have done so you are saying that first you take this square you divide into four parts now you take this small part one fourth of it you divide into five rectangles now that is not uh, or do you divide into five rectangles like this or which is the other way you are dividing that is not clear am i right okay vertically yeah, you are saying like this is that Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Ah. Exactly. Uh, then. Okay. So that you, you can count, it is the four rectangles in each side. In this side, it is a four rectangles, and it is the the down also four rectangles, and it is the four rectangles. So that is no. exactly you will be the yeah. two rectangles in the yeah. up. Ah. Uh, let's see. Can you? Is there some way they can they can draw it uh, and show me? Uh, we must learn to interact in this mode, so it is worth spending little bit of time. Can you draw your uh, solution on a piece of paper? Show me how you divide the rectangle. Just draw lines and then show over the uh, no project it to the uh, uh, let the camera capture what you have done. Ah yes, good, good. Uh, now I am able to see. Yes, okay. So this is the. Uh, Four corners, you will get the four squares. Correct. And it is the it is the in middle one. You can Correct. combine. You will get one more square. Ah, that is not clear. How? Look. How do you get a square out of the central rectangle? It is having the two rectangles, and each side rectangle it is having to the four rectangles. So I think there is a small so confusion. So I divided the first the paper and. Um, are you dividing um, the quarter into rectangles or squares? Because sometimes you are using rectangles as the word to describe what you are doing, and sometimes you are using squares. Please mark on the piece of paper uh, squares with an S. If it is a square, you mark an S there and uh, tell me that is an S square. This is also a. Uh, uh, an uh, exercise for you in communication how do you communicate quickly what you want to say hello uh, yes uh, this is the all rta it is the you will having the uh, squares only okay uh, maybe I, I will just uh, go to another center right because uh, now I have got the gist of what you are saying. You are dividing the paper vertically and horizontally. Uh, please uh, try it out. I think there will be a problem. You will not get the five squares. I am just giving you a hint. 
Uh, let me just uh, go to another place, Pune, D Y Patil. Now, uh, I am going to D Y Patil Institute of Engineering and Technology, Pune. Uh, my question to you is, uh, a center in Andhra Pradesh just now described a solution. Okay. Can someone tell me whether they uh, could clearly see what the person was talking about? Yes, sir. The square which is given ah. of dimension x, the area of the square is x square. So, we are dividing it into the 5 equal square. So, the dimensions are x square by 5, that is the area of each square. So, each square is of dimension x by root 5. So, we can cut corner of size x by root 5 and remaining area is of x square by 5 which we can join and form the one fifth square. Ah. Now, see uh, uh, this is a repetition of the solution given by an earlier uh, student. The problem here is how do you get x by root 5? Problem number 1. I have told you, you have a scissor and you have a paper, you have nothing else. How do you measure x by root 5? Problem number 2, the central portion is not a square. You are saying that it is, uh, its area is equal to that of a square, but how do you convert that into a square shape? Right? I want to see 5 squares. You understand? It is not going to give me 5 squares the way you are saying. First of all, I do not know how to get the length x by root 5. Okay? Let me go to another center. Uh, we actually uh, are running out of time, but still I will take one more center. We need to go further and discuss. Now, now I would like uh, to uh, you to tell me quickly, if you are uh, following a scheme where you are not dividing the paper vertically and horizontally, right? Because one method of dividing the paper is vertical and horizontal. All of you seem to be following a vertical or horizontal division parallel to the edges. Okay? Now, I will go to a center and that center should tell me if it is following a different scheme. Otherwise, we will not take the solution, we will go to another center. right? Okay, Let us go to New Delhi. Yes, Bhagwan Parishram Institute of Technology, New Delhi. Uh, yeah, shall it be possible uh, solution of this? Because we have tried many, but we are not getting. <laughs> okay, fine. There is a solution definitely, uh, otherwise I would not have given you the problem. Okay? Uh, it is, but it is not a trivial uh, puzzle. Okay? Uh, you may take time to do it. Uh, what I am interested in is the activity. Okay? I think what we will do is, we will proceed with the uh, remaining part of my, uh, uh, our discussion on productive thinking, because actually solution of the puzzle is only a part of the whole thing. Right? It is not necessary to get the solution to proceed further. Now, uh, I said that we would like to uh, explain the various levels of thinking using this activity that we have carried out. So, let me go to the next slide and uh, if you have been trying this uh, solution for this puzzle, uh, please stop uh, because we want to discuss further and you can uh, resume the uh, uh, your uh, you know trial later on because I am not giving a solution. So, that you have the pleasure of solving the puzzle. Okay? Now, though I am not going to give you the solution, uh, I want to tell you that one important uh, hint for solving the puzzle is that you must apply Pythagoras theorem okay, to get the dimension such as root 5 or 1 by root 5 and so on. Now, you know how Pythagoras theorem allows you to get a dimension such as root 5. We might think that root 5 is an irrational number, it is not possible for you to geometrically achieve this kind of a length, but uh, this is not correct because you know that if I take a right angle triangle in which one side is of length 2, another side is of length 1, then the hypotenuse will be square root of 1 square plus 2 square that is square root of 5. So, in this manner you can realize a length of root 5. Now, more than this I will not tell you because I do not want to rob the pleasure, your pleasure of solving the puzzle. But now, with this background, we can uh, explain the various levels of thinking. So, uh, in summary, we can solve this puzzle by application of Pythagoras theorem. 
Okay. Now, supposing we have taught students the Pythagoras theorem and some proof of Pythagoras theorem, something that we commonly do in all uh, school curricula. Now, the important thing is what kind of a question do we set to test the students thinking. So, one possible question that one may set is, so we are going to frame different types of questions on Pythagoras theorem and explain how the different questions test different levels of thinking. So, if you set a question such as state and prove Pythagoras theorem, right. So, we do that in an exam, we uh, teach students Pythagoras theorem and teach the students uh, proof of Pythagoras theorem and then in the examination, we ask them state and prove Pythagoras theorem. Now, this kind of a question only tests memory because we have already told, given all the information to the student, the student has to recall this information during examination. So, really this is not a problem, though people we may say that you know we have set a problem for the students, but strictly speaking by the definition of the word problem, this is not a problem, right. It is because problem is something that is not familiar to the person. So, state and prove Pythagoras theorem is a question that tests memory. Now, supposing we set a different question that is shown on the slide, the next one, the second question. Using Pythagoras theorem, divide a square piece of paper into 5 equal parts, 5 equal squares. Now, this is a, a more difficult question to answer. It tests application or problem solving. So, this level of thinking is called problem solving or application, where we are telling the starting point that is the Pythagoras theorem and we are presenting an unfamiliar situation. So, we assume that we have the students do not, students have not faced this problem earlier, division of a square piece of paper into 5 equal squares. So, then we say you start from a Pythagoras theorem and see how you can apply this theorem and divide a square piece of paper into 5 equal squares. So, this is a difficult question, it is testing application or problem solving ability. You can make the question more difficult like I did for you. Do not tell that you have to use Pythagoras theorem. So, teach students Pythagoras theorem and proof and then ask them to solve this uh, answer this question, divide a square piece of paper into 5 equal squares. So, no hint of Pythagoras theorem. Now, this is a more difficult question to answer. Now, this question tests what we call as critical thinking, because no starting point is provided. Typically, these kind of questions, uh, you know, now you have uh, thought over it for 10, 15 minutes. So, what you are attempting is different approaches to the problem, right. So, you consider one method of dividing the paper, you divide horizontally and vertically and then you uh, realize that oh no, you are not going to get 5 squares out of this kind of an approach. Then maybe you try a different uh, scheme of division, okay, divide into tri uh, triangles for instance. Can you divide into triangles or any other shapes and then combine triangles to get a square. So, you will try a different scheme. So, in this manner, you will be trying different approaches and then you will try an approach, then you will evaluate whether this approach is going to lead you to the solution, realize that no, it does not lead you to a solution, then discard the approach and try a new approach. So, this thinking in which uh, issue is approached from different angles and each angle or each approach is evaluated for efficacy. That is, you decide whether this approach is going to lead you to a solution and then you discard if it is not leading you to solution, think of a different approach. So, this is a much higher level of thinking than application of problem solving, this is called critical thinking. An even higher level of thinking is involved in setting a question to test various levels of thinking. So, for example, now we have set a question like divide a square piece of paper into 5 equal squares and we are trying to see what level of thinking the students have. So, you give them some time, if they are not able to solve this problem, give them a hint say that you know you use Pythagoras theorem and try to solve it, then see how many students are able to solve and so on. So, formulating or devising a question is a much higher level of thinking creativity. Okay? So, setting good questions is not easy, it requires highest level of thinking. For instance, setting questions for an examination like the joint entrance examination to IITs requires a very high level of thinking. So, it tests the creativity in people. So, with the help of this activity and uh, the set of different questions that are shown in the slide, I hope you will gain an appreciation of 
different levels of thinking. How depending on how the question is framed, you can uh, test various levels of thinking in individual, including ourselves. We can test whether we we whether most of our thinking is memory based, or are we able to apply concepts to unfamiliar situations? That would be application of problem solving. Do you have that ability? Do you have critical thinking ability? If you are not given a starting point at all, and you are simply presented with a problem, right? In research, this is the kind of situation that we encounter. So we say that in research, we do higher order thinking, namely critical thinking and creativity, even higher than problem solving. Okay. So here is an assignment for you. Understand critical thinking in detail using an internet search because. Research involves a lot of critical thinking, and of course, creative thinking also. Uh, creative thinking we are going to discuss in our uh, remaining part of this uh, sessions on productive thinking. But critical thinking, you try to understand yourself by doing an internet search. So you put Google search critical thinking, you will get lot of material. Okay, so please do this exercise. Let me introduce this topic of creativity. What is creative thinking? Okay, uh, we have said uh, during the beginning of this session on productive thinking that it is by asking new questions that you make significant contributions. Okay, so creativity requires you to ask questions. That is one of the ways in which creativity is uh, comes out. Right. If you ask, you are able to ask good questions, then you can be creative. But there are many other things that are required for creativity. So let us define what is creativity. Okay. So we have, for example, defined what is meant by productive thinking. Coming up with different approaches for doing as the same thing. We are broadly talking about the same higher level thinking abilities in terms of different words that are commonly used in practice. A creative th uh, thinking is another word that is used: creativity, creative thinking, and so on. So let's define what this thinking means. It is ability to look at the same thing as everyone else and think something different. This is one definition given by psychologists for creativity. Another definition given is a the second statement there on the slide: ability to take a fresh look at familiar objects and situations. Which is enriched by past experience, but not constrained by it. Okay, please uh, spend a, uh, some time in thinking about these definitions. Let's take the first one: ability to look at the same thing as everyone else and think something different. In other words, thinking differently is a mark of creativity. Illustrate this with some examples. Right? Let's take this example. Thinking differently. Here is an example of thinking differently. Ability to look at the same thing as everyone else, but think something different. Now, all of us have seen roses and thorns. Now, someone who also saw roses and thorns like us came up with this uh, idea. So, here we have listed on this first column various attitudes. That human beings possess, like optimistic, pessimistic, realistic, stoic, and so on. And on the right-hand side, we have some sort of a definition of this attitude using only roses and thorns, only two words, roses and thorns. So optimistic is equivalent to seeing roses everywhere, right? So optimistic is roses. Pessimistic, you see thorns everywhere, then you say. It's a pessimistic attitude towards life. Supposing you see the world as full of roses and thorns, you know sometimes you have roses, sometimes you have thorns. Then you say you are being realistic. Stoic. How does it matter whether there are roses or thorns in life? It doesn't matter, right? If you have that sort of an attitude, you say I don't care whether I get roses or I get thorns. I am always steadfast, right? Stoic. Humane, roses for you and roses for me. So let there let good things happen to everyone. Then you say you are humane. Selfish, roses for me and thorns for you. 
So, all the good things should come to me and all the bad things should happen with you. So, that is selfish. Sadistic, thorns for you and your blood for me. You enjoy if others are in trouble. That is a sadistic attitude. And finally, divine, roses for you and your thorns for me. That is how a saint, that is a saintly attitude. So, where the saint says that let all good things happen to you and I will bear all your difficulties. So, you see using two words roses and thorns, someone has conceived definitions of all the various attitudes that we encounter in life and distinguish between them. Okay? Now, this is a creative piece looking at the same thing as everyone else, but thinking something different. So, this is how in fact, we can uh, look into ourselves and see whether we have this ability. Have we ever thought differently than others? If we have, then only we can say we are creative. Similarly, if we are teachers, we should try to see in our own students whether they have this ability to think differently. So, as you can see, these kind of abilities are not tested very easily in examinations. Okay? To test whether people have creativity and so on is not so easy, but it is not that we can, uh, we need to assess people only through examinations and particularly the examination system that we have. Okay? There are many other ways of assessing creativity in individuals in interactions. Here are some more examples, okay? same line of definition, ability to look at the same thing as everyone else, but think something different. And now, this is uh, the first thing shown in the slide is about naming of individuals. Uh, let me tell you, tell you a small story regarding this. Now, uh, <clears throat> in our institution some years ago, there was a student whose name used to come up very often in all our uh, faculty meetings, particularly those meetings which were supposed uh, which were held for finalizing the grades. The reason was uh, this uh, student would fail in most of the courses. The name of this student was Ma Shivayana, Ma Shivayana. Now, this name was very, uh, uh, it's a, it was unique name, we have not come across such a name. So, once a discussion ensued among the faculty, uh, you know, uh, what does this name mean? Then a faculty member pointed out that uh, he had in fact discussed this point with the student and asked him you know, how were you named? And then this is what he said, what he said was very interesting. So, he said his father is a poor farmer and uh, mostly illiterate, but he is an ardent devotee of Shiva. And he somehow had a dream, uh, he had a dream that he is going to get five sons and he wanted to name all the five sons after Shiva. So, he came up with this scheme, he said that if you take the word Nama Shiva Ya, if you write it in an Indian uh, an Indian script such as Hindi for instance. So, it would be Na, Ma, Shi, Va, Ya. Right? So, there will be five letters in the Indian uh, script. So, this is what is written in the Roman script here in the slide. So, Na, Ma, Shi, Va, Ya. So, the first name he decided he would name Na, Ma, Shi, Va, Ya. Now, the next son, he said, I will rotate, I will start with ma instead of na and then it will be cyclic. right? So, next son would be ma shivaya na, then the third son would be shivaya nama, the fourth son would be vaya nama shi and the fifth one is yanama shiva. And he said, so actually he has four brothers and they are named like this. So, now this is very interesting. right? Uh, it is an example of creativity because you haven't uh, not we don't see people uh, coming across naming uh, we don't come across people naming their uh, children in this fashion, right? So here is an example of creativity. And some more couple of examples are shown here. I have deliberately chosen examples which uh, people of all disciplines will understand. One can talk of great creative works in uh, science and engineering, which is what you should do. But we should understand what is the definition of creativity from which. You, angle we have to look at the work done by individuals to appreciate where is the creativity involved. It is in the in the different method of thinking that is where creativity lies. So, here are some more examples creativity in expression. The ambassador from United States to India when he was leaving one of the ambassadors I forget the name uh, during his speech he, he was uh, trying to express his warmth for the Indian people. So, he said it as follows. So, he said when I go back to US during the coming winter, 
our vivid memories of India will warm us as we face the snows. So, if you take word by word, I am sure all of us uh, know each word and uh, you know we must have used it in some sentence or the other. But coming up with a composition like this to express your warmth, putting these words together in this fashion is where the creativity lies. Now, finally, one more example of humor. You know, humor, there is a lot of creativity in humor. So, there was someone who did uh, research on capitalism and communism, some social scientist. And then uh, he said, what is the conclusion of his research? He found that according to him, his research, the ultimate effect of capitalism or communism on human beings was the same. He found there is nothing much, uh, there is uh, one, each one has advantages and disadvantages, but some total of it is that both are not really good for people, for human beings. So, he uh, framed his conclusion as follows. He said, capitalism is the exploitation of man by man and communism is exactly its opposite. So, it is also exploitation of man by man. Opposite of this is also exploitation of man by man. So, this is a very nice way of expressing your uh, conclusion, right. So, in expressions in language and so on, also you find creativity. So, thinking differently is what is the mark of creativity. Now, let us look at things as engineers and scientists, little bit of technical matter, right. So, we said that creativity is thinking differently. We said that productive thinking is essentially thinking in different ways about the same issue or problem. So, let us consider some examples of how we can think in different ways. So, some general thinking strategies are given here with examples. Reformulation or restatement. So, you have a problem you want to solve. You can go on changing its statement, right, in order to solve it. So, you may find that you frame the problem in a particular manner, its solution is not so easy. You change the statement and then you uh, get a solution quickly. In fact, uh, very commonly in research, we go on formulating and reformulating our research problem, right, so that we are able to provide an effective solution. I am going to discuss an example of each type of thinking strategy in subsequent uh, slides. First, let me state the strategies here. Graphical and tabular representation. So, many times you want to use some information or data to arrive at a solution. How you represent the data is very important in getting the solution. Representing the data in tabular form or graphical form is a powerful method of coming up with solutions. Logical reasoning is another strategy. Commonly, all mathematicians use this in proving theorems. Division into sub problems. So, you have a big problem to solve. You first divide it into sub problems and then solve each small problem and then you uh, get the solution of the bigger problem by combining the solutions. And finally, using analogies okay, to solve problems. So, we are going to discuss these strategies. Let us take uh, one problem. So, I am going to state a problem and then discuss a solution. There could be other ways of solving the uh, problems, right. So, I will leave them to you as an exercise. So, uh, let me tell you a brief background to this uh, problem. In the in Japan, a particular uh, well known company, I am forgetting the name of the company, uh, once found that it was losing out to competitors in terms of productivity. So, uh, the management called a meeting of all the workers and uh, it wanted to discuss how the uh, productivity of the company can be uh, improved. So, they uh, had a plan, uh, they felt that they could ask the workers uh, to give suggestions. And uh, to motivate the workers, they said, well, what you do is you write your suggestions for improving the productivity on a piece of paper and drop it in a box. Okay? And then the management will look at all these suggestions and if a particular suggestion is found to be uh, promising, it would try to implement the uh, suggestion and if really the productivity went up, then a part of the profits that the company makes will be given to the individual who has made the suggestion. So, uh, the management thought that uh, this should be sufficient motivation for the workers 
to come up with ideas. And uh, the company thought that it must involve the workers because they are the ones who are actually doing the work, doing, doing the production. So, they thought good suggestions would come from them. Now, surprisingly what happened was that first time they called a meeting, they got very few suggestions from the workers about improving the productivity. Now, they were uh, taken by surprise. So, someone in the management did a silent uh, investigation into this and then he found that the reason workers were not responding was because they thought that it was a management trick to extract more work out of them. So, they felt that uh, uh, you know being uh, to become more productive they will have to work harder right and uh, they did not want to do that. Why should they work hard for somebody uh, for the company to make profits unless they get a share of share of it. So, they thought it is a management trick to extract more work out of the workers. So, if you involve the workers th themselves into making suggestions then the workers would be probably more amenable to doing harder work. So, it was because of this uh, fact of psychology that the workers did not respond. The manage someone in the management realized that the problem lay in the framing of the question. So, the question that framed was how can you become more productive and this framing of the question was not really a friendly framing. So, then this person altered the statement of the uh, question and after about 6 months they called another meeting. Now, this time they asked for suggestions on the following question. So, how can you make your job easier? So, they said they asked the workers you know how can you make your job easier we want to know. Now, if you carefully see um, both these questions are actually equivalent in some sense because if a particular job uh, becomes easy for the workers then in the given time the workers can do more jobs. So, evidently that would improve, improve the productivity. Now, as it happened the uh, workers gave a lot of suggestions. Okay? So, this time the workers felt that you know this was a uh, question for which they can give suggestions and it would be their advantage to their advantage. So, lot of suggestions were given and uh, the company actually implemented the suggestions and it is said that its productivity went up. So, whatever I described to you is a real thing that had happened although I do not remember the uh, name of the company. So, you can see how framing of the question is very very important framing of the problem how you frame the problem is important one particular method of framing may not lead to solution whereas, a slight change in the statement can make the solution easy. Now, there are uh, changing the statement uh, casting the information in different forms is actually the basis of many powerful transform techniques that are used in mathematics. For example, binary number system logarithm these are examples. So, we want to multiply two numbers you convert the numbers into their logarithms and add the numbers and then you take an anti log that is what people would do maybe 30 40 years ago. Nowadays of course, you have calculators, but essentially to make the point. So, logarithm changes a multiplication operation into an addition operation. Okay? So, you take numbers you take their logarithms. So, logarithms are the same numbers in a different form. Okay? Similarly, binary number system you have decimal number system you can express the same numbers in a different form namely binary form and we know that all computers and so on use a binary system. right? So, this is how by transforming the information in a different form by changing the statement of the problem to a different form you may be able to get solutions easily. So, this is a very powerful method of getting solutions. Uh, now, here is another problem right? and let us see what way we can solve it best. Uh, let me first tell you the statement of the problem. Uh, exactly at sunrise one morning you set out to climb the Tirupati temple. The path wound round the mountain. You climbed the path at varying rates of speed. You stopped many times along the way to rest and to eat the fruit you carried with you. You reached the temple just before sunset. So, you started in the morning went up the mountain in some roundabout manner and then you reached the temple at the sunset. After fasting and meditating for several days, you began your journey down along the same winding path, starting at sunrise and walking as before. 
at variable speeds you your average speed down the hill was more than your average climbing speed right this is what normally happens we always are able to walk down faster now what you have to do is prove that there must be a spot along the path that you will pass on both trips at exactly the same time of the day so you are starting in the morning and reaching the top of the temple okay going round some path which may not be straight then you are starting from the top and reaching the bottom you are starting the top in the morning and then reaching the bottom in the evening or maybe much earlier because your average speed down is much more than the average climbing speed now what you have to prove is that you will be at some spot at the same time of the day when climbing up and climbing down so please think over it how best you can solve this problem okay i will leave it as an exercise the strategy is available for you look at this slide that i put here you change the statement of the problem that could be one strategy to get a solution or use a graph to represent the information or uh, in this case maybe a tabular representation may not be possible or you may use logical reasoning okay so let's discuss graphical representation logical reasoning in uh, detail but for as far as this problem is concerned i will leave it as an exercise to you to use try these techniques and solving okay now this is the problem that i will discuss the solution for let's say divide uh, derive the trend in the behavior of plating adhesion on a silicon substrate from the measured data as a function of substrate area and doping level now this problem has been framed in the context of uh, semiconductor substrates so there are some words here which may be specific which uh, uh, may not be understandable by people in other areas but that really doesn't matter i will uh, draw a diagram to illustrate what we are talking about basically you have a substrate and you are plating the substrate okay and you want to measure the adhesion of the plating on the substrate this adhesion will be a function of area and function of substrate conditions so uh, from this data collected you want to check whether the adhesion varies in any particular pattern as a function of area and substrate condition so that is what this uh, problem is all about so the adhesion is measured for areas of 0.5 1 and 2 cm square and p plus p and n plus doping levels so if you do not understand doping you it doesn't really matter so it is talking about let's say the conductivity of the substrate so p plus substrate is a substrate of high conductivity in which the current is carried only by positive charges p type substrate is a substrate in which current is carried by positive charges but the conductivity is not so high similarly n and n plus substrates mean these are substrates where the current is carried by negative charges like electrons and n means a, a moderate concentration of charges whereas n plus means a very high concentration or very low conductivity uh, sorry very high concentration very high conductivity so basically you are varying the conductivity of the substrate uh, you are also varying the polarity of the carry, uh, charges which are carrying the current and you want to know whether these have any effect on the adhesion now you want to derive these trends by actually measuring the adhesion for various substrate conditions and various areas and from this you want to derive the pattern and each measurement you want to repeat at least twice or thrice you know every measurement you do a number of times to remove the random error in the experiment in the measurement so how will you go about uh, representing the data the measurements so that you get the pattern out of it so that is what we want to see uh, now we are close to the break um, i will probably take up this uh, the solution to this problem after the break